Well, welcome to today's discussion cafe, the Batna Kafana, hosted by the Mladi Levi um, Performance Art Festival. My name is Natalia Maisova. Um, Alma kindly invited me to uh, moderate today's discussion about um, life, the universe, and everything, or <laughs> to be a bit more specific about outer space um, and about the future at the intersections of theory, um, art, and activism. Um, obviously, this is quite broad terrain, and some of you might be wondering what these, uh, these words actually have to do with one another. Uh, luckily, we have uh, two very articulate uh, interlocutors here. Um, on my right um, is Moanis Sinanovic, an acclaimed um, and also still aspiring uh, poet, um, critic, cultural critic, uh, writer, essayist, essayist um, and if I missed anything, he might uh, he might add some descriptions as well. On my left, uh, we have um, the theater director, post gravity artist, um, performer uh, Dragan Jivadino, uh, whom some of you might have met at today's uh, informants uh, in the morning, and uh, accompanying him is Blas Chef, um, an actor. Um, intellectual, uh, space aficionado, and micro-globalization um, enthusiast. Mi Micro-expert. <laughs> <laughs> whose role today uh, will be to, to translate, um, to interpret for Dragon, and also to intervene whenever uh, he might feel um, the wish to do so. Um, so the format of today's discussion is that um, I throw some starting points, some discussion starting points at you, and then eventually give the floor to, uh, to my two speakers. Um, and toward the end of the discussion, of course, the audience will also be invited to ask, um, to ask questions or to polemicize as you, um, as you might like. Um, so I think that the reason that I was asked to uh, start this discussion off is because um, my background is in cultural studies and I've been fascinated with the intersections between uh, culture, space and art for a long time. Um, from a cultural studies um, point, uh, it's interesting to, to reflect on how um, outer space uh, was possibly the primal site of uh, utopianism throughout, uh, well, from the late 19th century and up until around the end of the Cold War. Um, and then functioned as this site of utopia um, in many different domains, from, um, from art, from literature, um, theater, the visual arts, cinema, and so on, uh, to also more pragmatic, uh, real political strategies, to economics even. Um, and it's really interesting also to reflect how these, uh, how these domains got intertwined and which ideas eventually um, began to shape our common shared imaginaries of, of outer space, also in relation to our own position, not only in space, but also in time. You know, what do we perceive um, as our future? What kind of outer space will uh, we as humankind eventually see? Uh, what roles do the different uh, infrastructures that we have at our disposal then have um, here? And uh, in, with, with hindsight, it seems that, um, you know, outer space exploration, well, it began in the first half of the 20th century, it's a well-known fact, and um, all new things take some time before they start to get historicized. And with outer space, because um, real space-related activities kind of started um, in relation to uh, military apparatuses and to some really ambitious uh, political ideas, uh, this is also the way that they initially uh, began to get historicized as well. Uh, now, with hindsight, from the 21st century, of course, we know that uh, this, uh, this kind of narrative, this kind of history of space exploration is full of omissions, uh, which is why it is particularly uh, welcome and good to observe that in the 21st century, when um, the first, the, the dawn of the space age has become, you know, an object of memory rather than of uh, future-oriented future thought, now we have lots of researchers, artists, and lots of voices coming to the fore trying to articulate the past, uh, present, and future significance of outer space beyond these real political and ideological uh, narratives. 
And uh, it's especially uh, significant that um, it's here in this space in, in Slovenia, in the former Yugoslavia, where uh, such initiatives actually uh, pioneeringly began towards the, um, the end of the 20th uh, century. Um, so what I'm trying to say uh, to start off this discussion is that um, from today's uh, perspective, of course, it makes sense to, to reflect on all the past historical narratives about, uh, about the beginning of the space age and to also uh, try to imagine uh, new futures using this, uh, this legacy, which does not only come from political documents or from economic and military apparatuses, but also from this vast, um, th this vast pool of ideas um, which we draw from philosophy, art and also um, science. So, um, I, I've, I've started off talking about utopias quite a lot, and maybe this might also be a good point to start off our um, discussion. In the 21st century, it seems that uh, thinking about outer space, now that it's dominated by narratives about private funded initiatives, now that it's kind of um, commonly perceived as the horizon of the never-ending expansion of brutal capitalism, it uh, sometimes seems a bit naive or even trivial to consider outer space as a site of um, utopia. Uh, however, of course, this, this premise uh, might be a little bit too harsh. And perhaps I'd ask uh, my two speakers to start off with a reflection on what it means um, to think um, in terms of utopias today, why it might be important, and what kind of a role outer space as an utopian horizon might still play, uh, to what extent it might still be relevant today. Um, perhaps, uh, Moanis, would you like to, to begin? Okay, so uh, first of all, I'm not as articulate in English as I am in Slovenian, and I'm not uh, sometimes I'm not very articulate in Slovenian either. <laughs> so you introduced me as a very uh, like articulate person and I just want to announce that it's not always so uh, to not have like too much of expectations about me. Yeah, but um, talking about utopias, when I, when I speak with my uh, leftist friend, usually um, we always end up speaking uh, about possible new utopias after the end of the, let's say, 20th century utopias. Uh, Alain Bedieu wrote a famous book about uh, this passion for real that was uh, like essential for 20th century utopias. But through time, to, through thinking, through debates, I came to a conclusion that Actually, I don't really believe in uh, utopias. I'm uh, quite based in uh, Abrahamic, let's say, metaphysics, and I believe more in dystopias than utopias. Uh, um, only utopia I can kind of believe is like uh, is otherworldly, not this worldly. I think utopias are for false prophets usually, but uh, since. In the, in the 21st century, in the postmodern world, we are not even able uh, to take one or two or three steps back to even reflect on our like dependency on utopias. And I, uh, and, and I think uh, this um, connection, this yin and yang connection between utopia and dystopia, we leave it like now. Um, I think uh, 21st the order we live in now is the biggest, the biggest utopia and dystopia at this, at, of all time, actually, you know. It's uh, this globalized liberal capitalist order is uh, greater utopia than it was, that, than so-called uh, so totalitarian regimes were, uh, let's say, uh, Stalinism or fascism and so, and so on, because uh, they serve all the purposes of utopia, at least in the Western world, since we exploit the other parts of the world, to be provided with anything we want at any moment. If we feel, even if we feel like bad or sick or whatever, we can get pill for it. Uh, I'm sure like soon we will be able to get pill to stop being racist and stuff, but... Uh, <laughs> But still, we feel like very empty and depressed and suicide rates are 
high and so on. And we don't, uh, in our like mental horizons, we don't even uh, see an alternative. So maybe from this point of view, it seems quite utopic to even stop thinking of utopias. I think it would be the first step towards some real change to get... Uh, we live in a dream, actually, you know? The dream, uh, let's say Hollywood dream, is only a part of it. There are a lot of bigger... Uh, there is a much bigger complex for producing dreams, uh, and Hollywood, for example, is only a, a part of it. So to get some gra grasp of real, of realness, would be, uh, I think, in a way, utopian, but it, it is also a necessary step to get rid of utopians and to start uh, like thinking or making some real change. So you don't think there is, it's possible to be a utopian starting from real parameters? I think when you start from real parameters, you stop thinking about utopias. For example, let's... Uh, let's uh, um, start with on some very basic everyday level. Um, today we have much problems with love because we take love as something utopic. We want a perfect partner or men want a perfect perfect lover. Like uh, men are still like caught in this uh, idea of Freudian idea of Whore, saint, woman, and women have their own phantasms. I don't want to talk about be about because I'm not a woman, and so on and on. Uh, but um, when you actually confront your expectations uh, and find out that there is a, no ideal person in the world, um, you stop thinking about some utopian relationship or marriage or similar and I think it's the same in politics or economics um, before I give the word to Dragon maybe just an observation that some theorists have distinguished between uh, utopia as a form so like this ideal society either constructed you know as a goal that we strive for or to criticize you know our ideals but some theorists also talk about the utopian impulse which i think is really close to what you're saying so you take what you have and you try to to kind of live with it and to create something better so i don't necessarily think that you're totally canceling um utopia. no no in in the sense you're talking about it's uh Talking about utopian uh, like impulse, impulse uh, I, of course, definitely I have it. We need to have it. Um, it's a paradoxical situation. It's, it's impossible to live without it. But, st <laughs> but still, it's impossible to realize it either. <laughs> Dragan, what, what would you have to say about utopia in relation to perhaps your work? Um... Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for what? Uh, Hello, everybody. Uh, for start, I must to tell that I really, uh, when I was invited to uh, discuss in this uh, uh, cafeteria, I know this cafana. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I really tell, and special when come uh, concept for this discussion. Special, I respect my colleague here. Uh, and I respect you, Natalia. Uh, I make decision that I really need uh, for this tema uh, more precise answers because I like to produce precise answers, uh, not just uh, infotainment. Uh, and I make decision and I ask organizer, uh, I need, in fact, uh, delay delay is because I call my friend uh, because he know me very good and we have similar uh, vocabulary uh, blush chef uh, the he translate me because he's really perfect speaker in English language you know yes if I start to speak in Russia Russian language today you know nobody understand very good you Natalia good but you know uh, another people have problem uh, but I need Delay for why? Because for diplomatic answer. You know, diplomats always need, if speak language, 
in fact, need time to react for quick question. Uh, I need, I am this person, you know, special because I tell, I, sp I speak perfect suprematistic language, Zaum Yazik, yeah, uh, which is combination the bird language with sky weather uh, mixture, you know, and this is really heavy to understand. And thank you now for that. Uh, okay, let's go to answer. Uh, uh, question of utopia. For me, I understand correct? Okay. Seveda, smo bili urojeni v koncept utopičnega mišljenja o svetu. We were born into the utopian concept of thinking about the world. U vsakem smislu je ta urojenost gradila eno, za mene se zdi, lepo etiko. Vsaka etika ne bi bila lepa, ampak seveda se je ta etika, ta ravno utopija je proizvajala fascinantno grdo. This feeling of being born into produced the feeling of beautiful ethics. So every ethics is beautiful for me, but this in general, but this also produced the fascinating aesthetics of the ugly. Yes. Yeah. In the the course of the process of his many years, he lived with a book. Gospod Brgles, to je bila drugače urednikica ene odlične založbe v Sloveniji o utopičnih socialistih. So, for many years I spent with a book by Ms. Brgles, who was an editor in Slovenia for many years, and her book about... Utopični socializem. About utopian socialism. In seveda, cel nabor utopičnih socialistov je bil fascinanten za enega pubertetnika. And this uh, whole line of utopian socialists was quite fascinating for for a for a adolescent guy. Moram reč da se vedat ko sem rastu tam od 20. proti 84. letu izmeram bolj prihala ta koncept distopije. So when I was growing from being 20 to being 84 or to the year 84, this concept of utopian socialism came to came to place more more and more. Svoda distopija ima fantastične izdelke, da bom rekel, da jih nima. Prav se prav en najboljših se mi je zdel mi. Ampak neodvisno od tega, me se je fenomen utopije spremenil v tistem trenutku, najbolj sem zaradi tega povabljen, ampak to je dejstvo. So, dystopia has many fascinating concepts, like me, me is a novel, Zamjatin. Like me, a novel by Zamjatin, but utopia is much more my thing. Če bi zdaj citiral mojega zagrebškega prijatla, berite Zamjatina. If I would quote my Zagreb friend now, I would say, read Zamjatin. Ja, ampak, jaz dystopijo nisem bil nikoli zadovoljen. But I was never happy, I was never pleased with dystopia. Predvsem, ker mislim, da so literarno izdelki, seveda so impresivni, kdo sem jaz, da bi zdaj bil kritičen. Ampak vse en mi niso prevrednotel, kako bi rekel, literature, ki jo jaz cenim. Ne bom zdaj v tem govoril, ker to ni tema. So in terms of literature, I think that they have not re-evaluated what I cherish about literature, these dystopian works. Tako sem pršil leta, 98, v Kozmonavski centr. So in year 98, that is how I came to the Kozmonaut Center, Kozmonaut Training Center. Zvezdno mesto. Star City, Russia. In sem seveda potem tam živel nekaj mesecev. And I lived there for a couple of months. Samo v prvem obdobju. In the first time there. In seveda sem hiter, so mi smo imeli ta ogled zvezdnega mesta. And very quickly they took us to a tour of Star City. In seveda smo zelo hitro tam, ker smo stanovali, pršel do pisarne Jurija Gagarina. Kam ima tudi napis Juri Gagarin. And very quickly they took us to the offices of Juri Gagarin that also have a big inscription Juri Gagarin office. Sorry, in fact it's not big. It's not big. It's not, it's very similar to in flat, you know. It's medium. It's medium inscription. Yeah. 
In seveda se je takoj naredila, kako bi rekel, gneča okrog teh vrat, ker je bilo pač na selekciji nekaj. So immediately there was a crowd around this door, because there was quite some people, including me. Kar naenkrat sem ob viselna obrobi, vse sem sam vrata gledal. And I was, I was, I found myself at the edge somewhere in a particular moment, because I was looking at the door. In seveda, Začel gledat druga vrata, kaj piše. And of course I started to watch the other door, what's written there. Prva vrata, zraven Gagarinovih vrat, je gor pisal heterotopic department. Ok, the first door besides the Gagarin door was the heterotopic department. Mmm? Mmm? In seveda, za um. Za um. In seveda, takoj. And immediately, Seveda začel sprašvati, kaj to pomeni za praktični um. Naj povem, da v zvezdnem mestu je stotina fantastičnih znanstvenikov. So I started to question what this means for the practical mind, because I have to say that there are hundreds of fascinating scientists in Star City. In seveda, jasno, ne, čisto vsi so bili doktoranti. All of them have a PhD. In seveda, na random, na poslučaju sem sprašval tudi, iz če so doktorirali. And randomly I asked what they were, what their doctoral thesis were all about. Tudi, ko sem Natalijo srečal, sem jo vprašal, iz če se bo doktorirala. Even when I met Natalija, I immediately asked her, what are, what is your doctoral thesis going to be about? In seveda, doktorja psihologije, ki nas je imel na testih psiholoških, sem vprašal, kaj je to? heterotopični oddelek v kozmonautskem centru. So, a doktor of psychology that had me on these psychological tests, I asked him, what does this heterotopic department mean? This, se pravi, ta psiholog, je bil velik meter 60 centimetrov. He was one meter and 60 centimeters tall. In je imel limonin cilinder. And he had a, you mean a melon cilinder. Yeah. In seveda, Kako bi rekel, vedno sva, za razliko od drugih sva se zmeram srečala v trgovini. So, unlike other people, I always met him at a store, at a general store of some kind. In sva, edina po mojem naročala morožne je, se pravi sladolet. So, we were the only people to order ice cream there. Takrat je on, ki smo kupovala morožne je, je on meni rekel, da je doktoriral iz kamikaz. So, in these ice cream sessions, he said he made a PhD out of Kamikaze, the Japanese kamikaze. Okay, zdaj pa povežem ta dva momenta, kamikaze in heterotopični oddelek. So, to connect kamikaze in heterotopic department. Namreč on mi je tudi povedal, kaj je heterotopični oddelek za njih v kozmonautskem centru. To je oddelek, ki raziskuje, kako v tistem trenutku, ko se bomo srečali s tretjo, s tretjim drugim, ne z drugim drugim, ne z unanim drugim, ampak s tretjim drugim. So, this is the heterotopic department is the department that researches what will happen in the moment when we meet with the third man, with the third second man, the third... The third man, why no woman? The third, yeah, human, non-human. Other. The third entity. The third entity. The third other is the good... First Adam in philosophy, I think, yeah? In, seveda, v tistem trenutku, Kako bi rekel, nastopi vprašanje komunikacije. So that's the moment where the question of communication arises. Drug, drug moment je nastopi kognicija. The second moment just after that is cognition. In tretji moment je forma kognicije. Third moment is the form of cognition. In heterotopični oddelek formulira ta vprašanja, seveda, zakaj jaz to tako dost natančno vem, ker od tistega trenutka naprej Utopija ni igrala nobene vloge več v mojem življenju. Distopija v hollywoodskih filmih, ki so res včasih odlični. In seveda, heterotopija je postala centralna tema moje raziskave pozgraviteljske umetnosti. So from this moment on, I knew that utopia is not my topic anymore. Dystopia was never anyway. But heterotopia is my topic in post-gravity art. In this book is one, I don't know if you know this, there is inside heterotopic, the question of heterotopia. 
Heterotopia heu een nader... Uh, oh, prost, ja, ik moet eens uh, uh, Heterotopia, maar hoe... Kako bi neko različne modele... Heterotopia uh, has different uh, models. Sploh u filosofiji. Especially in philosophy. Ampak zelo pomembna je v anarchizmu. But it's very important in anarchism, in our anarchist movement. In transhumanizmu. And transhumanism. Ampak to je pa še čist drugo vprašanje. But that's a whole other question. Now it's working. Um, Moanis, is there anything you might like to add or interrogate with relation to, um, with regards to um, heterotopias? And um... not, not really. Even before uh, we met here to debate, uh, I was thinking how we'd go because uh, Dragan uh, is speaking about, uh, let's say, the same terms in uh, a different discourse. So I just listen in wonder and, and learn. <laughs> 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 um, okay, maybe um, Dragan, could you could you relate the question of the heterotopia um, not only to post gravity art but to the broader paradigm of uh, space culturalization? I think that whenever we start uh, to think about space programs, we are kind of wired to think of them in terms of um, either the broad term of the imagination or in terms of very specific. Um, economic uh, or political undertakings. However, if you dig a bit deeper, we'll see that there is um, a certain kind of cultural component to all space programs, to all endeavors to uh, to go into space. And what I really appreciate about uh, your line of work is that you um, articulate what this cultural dimension might be. But instead of me just speculating what it actually means for you, maybe um, you could um, think a little bit about the relations between uh, heterotopias, um, the vector of post-gravity art, and the broader paradigm of space culturalization? <coughs> ja. Uh, v vsakem primeru je nastopil v tist, se pravi, v času, ko sem srečal heterotopični oddelek dobesedno. In the time pred... when I met this heterotopic department, literally. Uh, in nisem si predstavljal v življenju, da bi lahko nekaj ko bilo, kako bi rekel, pragmatičnega, kot ti rečejo, windows ali pa the doors, ja. Ja, ali prosti. And I never uh, imagined something as pragmatic. It seems like, it seems like windows and doors, something very complex. Doors mislim na band, windows pa na... Doors I mean the band and windows I mean Bill Gates. Ja. Skratka, uh, nisem si tako predstavljal. In potem seveda sem se začel, uh, kako rekel, formulirati, namreč, uh, ta odnos med gravitacijskim in uh, levitacijskim. So I, I uh, try to formulate or, or to uh, form uh, this relation between the um, uh, gra gravitational and levitational. Ja, yeah. uh, predvsem ta, uh, kako bi rekel, antipozicija ne obstaja antigravitacija, ne? The anti, there is no antiposition to the gravity. There, there is no anti-gravity. Yeah. To preprosto ne obstaja, to je, kako bi rekel, par, to niti, niti paroksizem. It's, it's not a, even a paradox, it's not a paradox. It's, a, it's a ox, an, an ox and a moron. Yeah. <laughs> Precisely, thank you. You know, this is... Thank you, because you are here too. No problem. Yeah. Uh, in seveda, v tistem trenutku je bilo jasno, da je vprašanje uh, kulture uh, in umetnosti v realnem vesolju ključnega pomena, in kako zdaj to monumentalno problematiko, ki jo poznajo vse knjižnice sveta skupaj, oblikovati v eno smiselno celoto? So the question was that how uh, to, to put this culture and art question uh, that all the, uh, in space of course, that all the um, libraries of the world know, how to put it into a kind of a... Uh, Or, Vzpostavil teno metodo. In a good hole, in a methodical way. Uh, in seveda ta metoda, seveda je pršla zelo hitr s, s temu, kar sem rekel, topike. Vzpostavil topike. Ne utopike, ampak topike. So is to establish the topics, not the utopias or the utopics. Of... Posebej, ko doživiš le levitacijo. 
especially when you live literally when you when you in your physical body live through the gravitation how how it feels like in yes vada samu prvom koraku dve ure doživu levitiranja i to u velikom prostoru so he uh, so uh, there was this first two hours of levitating in a big space in seveda uh, u stratosferi in the stratosphere with the cosmos in seveda kako bi rekel sem se odločil da bom to poskusu kako bi rekel s 50-timi topikami ki so jih pol spremenil v resnit topike so bile zaradi heterotopije sem jih spremenil v koordinate postgravitacijske umetnosti so i decided to make 50 topics which i then later on changed into 50 coordinates of post gravity art in u tem smislu seveda je bilo zdaj ne bom seveda vam zdaj govoril katere so v tej knjigi so i won't count them now for you i won't you know <laughs> ampak to kar je bistveno but the crucial thing is je to da si ne dovolimo prenašat gravitacijskih odnosov teh v tej tako imani socialni dinamiki v družbenih odnosih v ekonom v ekonomski That we don't simply copy the social, economical, societal uh, relations here on Earth. Posebej v odnosu recimo do teksta Kazimira Maljeviča o ekonomiji. So especially in relation to the text of Kazimir Maljević about uh, economy. Da se ne sme v realnem. So that in in real space in prenašat al automatsko teh kulturnih vzorcev. Ne, nasprotno, oni so uničujoči. So these cultural patterns should not be directly transferred or translated because they can be devastating or they are devastating, destructive. Seveda ker sem uh, uh, kako bi rekel ateist in metafizika nima prostora v mojem svetu umetnosti because I'm an atheist and metaphysics has no real place in my field of art in, in my art uh, uh, radical atheist radical atheist in encyclopedist and encyclopedist so da sem začel prav se prav sistematično gledat kako bi rekel uh, 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 kupčke enciklopedične kaj tam drži kaj pa to hor ne bi držal tako po trošk sem se začel so i started to watch these uh, columns you have in encyclopedias what would still be plausible viable or still hold up there and what wouldn't sploh pa koncept zgodovino idej except especially the concept of history of ideas zgodovino tehnologije history of technology i seveda prav se prav ugotovo da moram v to se prav bistveno u uh, u uh, u uh, 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 topiki uh, uspostav bazično idejo da je vse krucialno drugače se to v resnici ni neki drugega kot modernističen koncept so I, i i wanted to just say that uh, there's a basic idea that everything is essentially different which is not that far from the old modernist ideas ne sem da ni delač it's not far away from modernist ideas okay isto in še development se pravi še razvoje noter it's the same with the development <laughs> kašen ja to prav za prav da je v realnem vesolju vsi ti odnosi kako bi rekel postanejo kako rekel visoko modernistični in real space and real outer space all these relations we've been talking about become highly modernistic or late modernistic is devom zaključil a uh, če bi zdaj naredil še en obrat If to I make bi... another turn no? uh, uh, moj profesor krasen profesor my professor uh, 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 dal mu tudi ime on bo vedno na zakaj tako doktor krečič doktor peter krečič hvala za peter uh, skratka je v enem trenutku uh, ko je sedel sem on je se pravi bil sem nisem 90 let in on me tako gleda in nekak mi je hotu dopovedat kakar razlika je da do tistega trenutka v katerem se jaz rodim pa oni živijo pa on pozna Černigoja kakšna razlika je kaj je to moderno so he, he told me about when I, when i was in my 20s he told me about what kind of a difference it is between the moment that he lived his youth when he knew Černigoja and the slovenian constructivists and, and so on to the moment that i live now i reku ko boš vidu da je nekaj anti kaj je moderno when you will see that lepo when you will see that something is anti that is the modernity that is the that is modern and that is beautiful uh, 
Modern Beautiful. Modern Beautiful. In, ok? V tistem trenutku pravzaprav sem sam videl, da je v realnem vesolju, kaj realno vesolje? To je od 100 kilometrov do 700 kilometrov nad zemljo. Real outer space, as we could say now for humans, is between 100 and 700 kilometers above Earth's surface. To smo se dogovorili. That's how we made an agreement, humans, more or less. Seveda, od 36 tisoč kilometrov naprej, from 36,000 kilometers from the Earth's surface, je pa vse metafizično. Everything is metaphysical. But here in these middle orbits and low orbits, it's our orbit. Jaz nič ne razmišljam del od 36 tisoč kilometrov in to je heterotopija. So I don't think beyond 36,000 kilometers and that what I think about is heterotopia. Thank you. I really like this, this clarification on where um, your agenda is situated. Also in terms of space, I mean, you're quite modest. Um, <laughs> 36,000 kilometers. Um, at the same time, we do know that uh, cultural efforts related to outer space um, are very diverse, and your paradigm is one of many, actually. We can also say that uh, space has played an important role um, as this transcendent horizon, perhaps a metaphysical one, also as a brutally capitalist one. Um, and because we also have another uh, um, engaged artist, Moanis, with us today, it would, I would really be curious uh, to hear about your um, kind of, your um, thoughts about the relationship between outer space um, and artistic practice. It's interesting how Gra uh, Dragan limited his uh, interests uh, like to 36,000 kilometers away from Earth. Usually uh, people don't think in these terms, you know. Ma mainstream mindset about space is like uh, always concerned about infinity and what does this infinity mean. <coughs> Mo modernist idea usually is, um, let's say, not really modernist. Modernist idea was still a kind of utopian, let's say. Uh, but postmodern idea is um, what to do with this infinity. And the answer usually is nothing. We are just uh, these pieces of uh, materia with some kind of consciousness with which we don't know what to do about. Uh, we are infinitely alone and everything is basically meaningless, there are maybe fragments of meaning floating around space out of which we made some psychedelic constellations and so on. We try to like squeeze the meaning out of these uh, psychedelic collages, let, let, let's say. Um, but what if we turn back to pre-modern uh, idea but through our postmodern lenses? What if this infiniteness is just basically an infinite garden gifted to us? What we, if we are still the center of the universe and the crown of existence? I'm saying this a little bit ironically, but also a little bit seriously. And this infiniteness is just a poetic way uh, for, let's say, universe to, to show us to uh, like to give us a gift, you know. If everything is I infinite, we can be in the center. If <laughs> and uh, if we have consciousness, like if we are the rare uh, or the only beings with such developed consciousness, it is definitely true because we are the only ones who can uh, value like the pos our position. So that would mean uh, we are surrounded by the infinite garden and we can only um, cultivate it. I mean, the garden is the basic thing to be cultivated. We know the myth of Garden of Eden and so on. Uh, this is the point I would start to think about. And I have no practical ideas, of course, I never thought about it, uh, really. But uh, there, there is a, the alternative we are living now is what if the Earth ends in a nuclear war or in a, let's say, devastation, like uh, maybe a, a climate devastation, 
uh, and only people uh, such as Elon Musk and his his colleagues and some like let's say a group of tens or few hundreds of people will be able to escape. Is this a cultivation? I, I don't think so. It's just the prolongation of uh, exploitation. I think science basically in history has uh, two means of approaching its object. One is the way of cultivation and the other is the way of exploitation. And <clears throat> I think the science since late or the second half of 18th century was mainly concerned with exploitation. Uh, but if the science want to uh, switch, uh, it needs art also. So this is the way I see the role of art in cultivation of <laughs> space. Could I, could I push you to think a bit further? Like there are many mm, metaphors that relate um, humankind to outer space. Tarkovsky has famously said that uh, we don't need outer space, we need a, um, a mirror. But your um, really poetic um, conceptualization is kind of, um, it's different. So if you had to kind of choose a, a tagline for, um, for this reflection that you've given us, um, what would, in, well, in which direction would it go? Uh, everything is poetry. Yes. I really liked, I completely agree. <laughs> yes, you tell in one moment, you know, uh, especially 19th century, were follow out, you know, uh, way from, uh, oh, of English guru. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, no, that the 19th century was put ki je jo nastavila, spremenila urnik človeštva z industrializacijo. So 19th century changed the schedule of humanity with industrialization heavily. Ko seveda je v resnici, kako bi rekel, ne samo v Angliji, sploh v ZDA. Not only in England, especially in the United States. Seveda bilo pravo zmagoslavje, ki je svet kar enkrat dobil Volta Wittmana. There was a real celebration, there was a real triumph when we got Volt Wittman. In seveda, odgovor v umetnosti je edini odgovor, je, kako bi rekel, to ni zdaj samo vprašanje tehnologije, kako narediti umetnost, se prav poezi se. So it's not only a question of technology, how to do art. Ampak tudi poezije, to je krucijalno. A question of poetry. Mislim, jaz ne vem, ampak si lahko pred takim, bom rekel, auditorijem v naturi, v naravi, dovolil, kako pravzaprav funkcionira, zakaj je poezija v procesih kognitivne, v kognitivnih procesih oblikuje tako imenovane nefunkcionalne sisteme. So poetry in the cognitive processes, how should I say this in front of this auditorium in nature, forms non-functional processes. Mene v življenju so več ali manj tudi v heterotopičnih modelih zanimali funkcionalni sistemi. I was always, more or less, even in, kaj se še? Funkcionalni sistemi. I was interested in functional systems, even in heterotopija, that's what. Ja, seveda, kako bi rekel, ne moram si pa pustiti v žitka, recimo pri Monty Pythonu, nefunkcionalnih sistemov. But I can't, I can't omit the joy of having non-functional systems like Monty Python. Mislim, mislim, kaki neverjetno lepi kreteni so to. That's incredibly beautiful imbeciles. Skratka, da se vrnem nazaj, v tisto, v odgovor, tisto na začetka sem ga mislil, pa me je zapeljalo. Seveda, ključen, za razumevanje pravzaprav je ime Fjodorov. The key figure for understanding this is Fjodorov. Skratka, Fjodorov je vsodno vplival na prvega znanstvenika vesolskih tehnologij, ime mu je Cjolkovski. So Fjodorov very strongly, very largely influenced the first scientist of space, which is Konstantin Eduardovič Cjolkovski. Hvala. Skratka, učenc od Cjolkovskega je bil pa že Koroljov. And the pupil of Cjolkovski was already Sergej Pavlovič Koroljov, the rocketry engineer. Ampak 
Če pogledate, pravzaprav, prav pri Fjodorovu z njegovim temeljnim delom, Already with Fyodorov, with his uh, basic work, with his fundamental work, se pravi uh, filozofija združenega dela, philosophy of unified work, skupne, uh, of, of, pardon, of, of, skupnega dela, common work, ja, common task, common task, common task. Paste, to je, to je ključno delo 19. stoletja, ki je vplivalo na 20. in bo vplivalo na 21. in 22. stoletje. So that is the key work of 19th century that influenced the 20th century and will influence or shall influence the 21st and 22nd century. Meni je neskončno žal, da ni preveden v Slovenščino. I am terribly sorry that it's not translated to Slovenian. Maybe se pravi, I mean, uh, filozofija skupnega dela, tukaj se potem delijo dva generalna koncepta umetnosti. Here we have two general concepts in art. In in ne sam v umetnosti na sploh. Not only in art, but in general. To je, imenovala si prej Tarkovskega, in ti lahko iz Fjodorova gledaš poetsko strukturo, ampak ona, ko je poetska, zdaj odgovarjam, ne odgovarjam, dodajam uh, tvojem izvrstnemu odgovoru. Uh, so when you have poetic structure, like with Tarkovski, you can already observe that from the standpoint of Fjodorov. Ja ki je mene tako fantastičen, kot so Monty Python, ampak je čisto daljen od mene. It's as fantastic as Monty Python for me, although different and apart, ja. what apart. Ampak operira s tako imenovano notranjo montažo. But it operates with the term of internal, mon- internal editing. Se prav funkcionalni, heterotopični, pa funkcionirajo z unanjo montažo. Eisenstein je tako naprej. And functional heterotopic systems uh, uh, operate with external editing, like Eisenstein. In to je glavni konflikt med notranjo montažo in zunanjo montažo. And that's the general conflict, that's the basic conflict between Ko se internal... pesnik vsede pred računalnik, more, ko oblikuje, moram reči, da sem se razveselil, uh, ker sem, sem, <laughs> sem vedel, da bo tudi pesnik in tako odličen pesnik. Uh, I was glad vedel. to be uh, co-guest with such an excellent poet as uh, Moanis. Tovari Sinanovič. Uh, seveda. Uh, on, ko se vsede pred računalnik, on se, ali ma že poetiko, že zgrajeno, pa dela sam notranjo ali sam zunanjo montažo. When he sits in front of the computer, his poetics is already made, it's already built. Either he does internal or external editing. Ali pa, pravzaprav se odloča, kakšna bo ta pesem, kakšna je ta njegova, uh, kako bi rekel, odziv, ta kognitivni odziv, uh, na nefunkcionalni sistem. So, either, uh, or he decides what his a cognitive response to this non-functional situation will be. Ja. To tako je, mislim, da je ta model per uh, Fjodorovu, ker nam ga je nastavil, seveda on je bil uh, globok uh, virnik, teolog skorbi. Fjodorov was a deep, deeply religious person, almost a theolo- theologi- theolo- ha, ko se teologist. Theologist. 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 Ja. Supposedly. In je seveda, kako bi rekel, uh, delo je u knjižnici he worked in a, at a library bio je knjižničar he was a, a librarian veste knjižničari to so eni najpomembnejših ljudi na svetu librarians are one of the most important people in the world in seveda ko je pršu iz kaluge uh, u knjižnico uh, so Tjolkovsko. when Tjolkovski came from kaluga which is near moscow to this library to fyodorov the library ja. in je naročil knjigo and he ordered the book to, to be fetched or to be... In ko se je vrnu Cijolkovski, pa ste, Cijolkovski je bil autodidakt. Cijolkovski bi... was largely self-taught. Uh, Cijolkovski je bil gluh. Cijolkovski was almost totally deaf. Kot sam autodidakt je na konč življenja učil fiziko in matematiko. And as a self-taught person, at the end of his life, he taught physics and mathematics. Se pravi, to najvišjo stopnjo poezije which is the highest level of poetry. Se prav formula kot čista lepota, če je formula lepa, je točna. Formula to. as, uh, as pure beauty, so if a formula is exact, then it's also beautiful. In formula se ne bere za poredoma. And you can't read a formula consequently, like in a, in a prescribed order. Formula se bere z enim pogledom istočasno. You look at it as a whole, in, 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 in one time unit. And if you have knowledge, oh, if you have knowledge, you can 
if you have correct knowledge, if you have adequate knowledge, you can read it straight away as a whole. You can't help yourself either with internal or external editing. In koje pršu Tsiolkovski Fyodorovu, Fyodorov je šao ven da je on knjige najdu za neke ur. So when Tsiolkovski came to Fyodorov, after Fyodorov got his books from the from the warehouse where they were, yeah. Je čakal ga šest knjig. There were six books there. In je rekel Tsiolkovski, ja, ampak jaz nisem naročil te knjige. And Tsiolkovski said, I didn't order these books. Pa mu je rekel Fyodorov, ne, jaz sem jih naročil za vas. And Fyodorov said, I ordered it for you. Skratka, to dela zdaj za vas, kako bi rekel računalnik. So that's what the computer does for us. That's what the computer does for us. So sorodne tekste. That's what the computer does for us today, to suggest, to suggest connected, related topics, texts, and so on. Okay, se upravičujem. Jaz sem sam hotu, začel pa me je seveda zapeljalo tako kot vedno, reči, da je, kako bi rekel, na e, da je vse in v 19. in v 20. stoletju odgovor v poetičnem, v poeziji. So, all I wanted to say is that all the, the, the answer for the 19th and the 20th century is in poetry, in the poetical. Yes. Juanis, do you find that Dragon has accurately described your, um, your attitude to the computer and yeah. to the process of writing? It was actually quite an accurate conceptualization and description of my work. Uh, I never thought about it in these terms, but I think it, uh, it is descriptive. It is of value. It has this describing value. Definitely. Uh, I will not talk about lower order patterns, higher order patterns or cardinal neurons now. Because that's how our brains function. But in any case, in knowledge and knowledge, we share our connection with the cardinal neurons. But in any case, science and art spread, open up, develop our conscience through cardinal neurons. V tem smislu, kako bi rekel, jest za znanstvenike in umetnike, kako bi rekel, sugeriram, predlagam, dal bi jim na recept narkotike. So I would suggest narcotics for scientists and artists. For MDMA, like... Da si širjo še vest. To expand their conscience. Like MDMA twice a year. But what is the role of philosophers and theoreticians in... Filozofi morajo postati znanstveniki, če ne jih nečem videti. Filozofers must become scientists, otherwise I don't have to, I don't want to see them, I don't have anything. Kaj pa je pomeni znanstveniki? Mislim, da morajo imeti metodo bolj egzaktno, kot imajo zdaj. They need to have a more exact, more specific, more built method than they do now, the philosophers. Metoda je tist, kar dela znanost. The method is what produces science. Sorry, I have very bad humor, okay. But thank you for outlining also this entanglement of the religious, the spiritual, and the technological, and the scientific as the background for the Soviet and Russian space program, and also for outlining how this poetic, this artistic drive has also been inherent to it. As far as I'm aware, uh, the, the Soviets and um, then later the Russian space program has had a fairly pronounced interest in, uh, in culture and art for a longer time and probably um, with a greater emphasis on it than, uh, for example, NASA and, um, and ESA. Um, at the same time, um, it seems that, um, well, in the 21st century, um, this attitude has kind of um, taken some... Uh, interesting pathways sometimes. For example, uh, just last year, um, I remember having to start a lecture on um, cultural studies of outer space by pointing out this, this uh, case where the Russian Space Agency apparently has dedicated an enormous uh, budget to funding um, what they claim is the first blockbuster ever shot in, in outer space. And they actually sent a team of um, a film director 
who was previously known for shooting, um, well, big budget uh, comedies and then lately um, a film memorializing one of the episodes in the Soviet space program. So now he was sent into outer space with um, his star, the star of the movie, Yulia Peresild. Um, and a, uh, a cameraman, and they shot 300 hours of footage um, for this movie provisionally entitled Challenge, which has this quite fairly simple plot. Um, there is uh, a doctor, or there is somebody on the International Space Station in distress, and then of course this woman who looks like uh, a fashion model, uh, she, um, she goes into outer space to employ her medical skills and then save that, that cosmonaut. Uh, now, to me personally, it seems like a really weird investment given that um, the budget of Roscosmos, the Russian space agency, is a lot smaller than the budget of NASA. Um, it also seems a really strange way of, of marketing something because actually the first footage um, shot in space and then edited into a movie appeared uh, much, much earlier. So um, it appears in Andrei Uzika's film. Uh, from 1995 out of the present and there's actually um, a camera aboard a space station and a cosmonaut kind of documents the disintegration of the Soviet Union from, from this uh, space station. So to me that would be the primal example of um, art related to, um, to space and, and to cinema. But I would really like to hear maybe your opinions on this, uh, you know, this extension of the space race, this race for records in space, which have now come to the point of, well, we were the first ones to shoot this blockbuster in outer space, so the US can do it um, in, in Hollywood, in studios, but we have actually done it. What does this tell us about the significance of, uh, of space programs and space exploration today? A, cer I ha uh, a certain theory of uh, conspiracy theory would state that the first blockbuster was <laughs> filmed was landing on the moon. I'm just kidding. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I don't know. That, does it have like any value? Does it have any meaning? Um, Soviets and Americans have been uh, like involved in this uh, kind of a r rat race, which can be referred to, uh, again, uh, biblical and Quranic reference of Gog and Magog, the two faces of the same coin, uh, the coin of like the modernity of 20th century. What does it mean if one or the other comes first in this uh, red race w what uh, what is the consequence for like for me or you or some ordinary uh, person on the other uh, side of the world I think this uh, thing is so meaningless that it is impossible to to give non commonsensical answer even you know so wh what does it mean like um, to film a f first porn film on Mount Everest or first porn film on, uh, let's say, uh, Eiffel Tower or whatever, you know, like, I see it in that way. Yes, I think I'm going to be a little bit more than a little bit of 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 a prav tako dobesedno. Jaz samo naj vam rečem, jaz sem sedel skupaj v pisarni s James Cameronom, ki je hotel posnet film v Vesolju, pa mu niso pustili. So the beginning of this message now is I sat in an office together with James Cameron, the movie director, who wanted to uh, film a movie in space, uh, but he wasn't allowed to at that time. In seveda mene bi žalelo odgovarjati na to vprašanje, se opravičujem Natalia globoko. <laughs> So I would be insulted to answer this question deeply. I'm so sorry. Mene zanima abstraktna umetnost v gravitaciji nič, zakaj, za apsolutni nič. So I'm interested in abstract art in at zero in zero gravity for the for the abstract zero, for the total zero, for the total nothingness. Yes, zero zero zero. <laughs> Zero from, ja, zero z strani realnega, ki je absolutno enak, 
niču na metafizični strani. So zero from the field of the real that is absolutely equal to the zero on the metaphysical side. Reku, ta nič, ki pravzaprav raziskuje psihologijo metafizike. This zero, this nothing that, that uh, um, uh, researches the Psychology. psychology of the metaphysics. Yes, the model is very well known. I know these guys who made the movie. No, 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 Natalia mi bo zdaj pomagala 80 let je pred parimi dnevi preznoval brat od Nikita Mihalkova uh, Kočalovski. So uh, there, uh, there was the 80th birthday a few days ago of Andrei Kočalovski, the brother of Nikita Mihalko. Kočalovski je kreten, jaz ne bom zdaj razlagal za kaj je kreten. Kočalovski is an idiot, I won't explain why. Seveda je pa naredil par odličnih filmov. But he made some some great movies. In seveda Kako bi rekel, on je v 50 letih naredil, seveda je pa naredil en fascinanten film. V bistvu scenarij za en fascinanten film. He did, he made one actually truly fascinating movie. To je Rubljova. On je, se pravi, včeraj je praznoval scenarist, teden dni nazaj scenarist Rubljova. Mislim, to ni kar tako. He was the screenwriter for Andrej Ljubljov. Kdo sem jaz, mislim, da bi zdaj njemu rekel, da je idiot. Ampak je idiot. So, he is not an idiot, but he is an idiot. Ok, ampak v 50-ih letih je naredil pisano kokoš film. In the 50s he made the... How do you translate that? Pisana kokoš. A very colorful hen. Jatko. Kako imaš rusko rabjat? Kuruška rabuška. Beauty, kuruška rabuška. Ok, tako nekak gre ta film. Ampak ne bom zdaj o filmu govoril, bil bistno je to, da v tem filmu, ker je to bilo še vpliv socrealizma in tam je bil močen. In this movie, because of the influence of social realism. V bistvu je bil to socidealizem. It was social idealism, in fact, in this movie. Ja, seveda, mislim, on je bil toliko talentiran, da je znal to prevrnoti, da ne bo pomoti. He was so talented, Kočelovski, that he knew how to reform this, he re-evaluate these things. Ampak, kaj je neverjetno, seveda, v sovjetskem filmu je bil konflikt med Dobrim fantom. In the Soviet movies there was a conflict between the, uh, the good guy. Govorimo dramaturgi. In, in the dramaturgical sense, in dramaturgy. Konflikt s dobrim fantom in super dobrim fantom. With the good guy and the super good guy. Ni bilo prostora yeah. za slavga fanta. So there was no room for bad guys. <laughs> in sveda, to, kar gledamo v Hollywoodu. And what we watch in Hollywood. Gledamo konflikt med slabim fantom. Between, we have a conflict between a bad guy in med super slabim fantom. And with a super bad guy. In seveda, mi smo na strani slabga fanta. So, of course, we go with the bad guy, who's not so super bad. Mislim, vsak večer gledate na deljevanke, mislim, ker gledate in ste na strani identifikacijskega modela, mimetičnega. Zato so vraža mimezis, ker te identificira s kretevi. So, every evening you watch this series in this mimetical model that identifies you, that personalizes this with these idiots, the bad and the super bad. In seveda, kar naenkrat si ti na strani v hollywoodskem filmu, na strani policaja. And immediately in Hollywood movies, you play the role of the officer, of the police officer. Mislim, mene kaj anarchista to, mislim, vsak večer se suje. As an anarchist, I'm devastated by this every evening. Da sem na strani policaja. To be, to play the role of an officer when watching a series or a movie. Ali pa kaj še le kakšnega vojaka? Or let alone a soldier. Se pravi, to sta bila ta dva modela. So these were the two models. Sveda se to je, kako bi rekel, treba gledat eksperimentalni film. So that's why you have to watch eksperimental movies. No, in zdaj bi v stilu mojega zagrebškega prijatelja rekel, gledajte filma, filme Tomislava Gotovca. So in the style of my Zagreb friend, I would say, watch the movies of Tomislav Gotovac, the famous performer. Se bote identificirali s trikotniki. You will identify yourselves, you will find the relation with triangles there. Ampak dobro, da se vrnem nazaj, se pravi, ne bi hotel komentirati 
takih neumnosti. I wouldn't want to comment on nonsense like that. To je ponavljanje uzorca i zemlje. Se pravi, če se vrnem na začetek, nič v kulturnem uzorcu ne sme. V gravitaciji nič se ponoviti kaj na zemlji, ker ponavljamo iste napake. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't re, remake or copy the patterns from the earth in gravity zero, because we will make the same failures. Kategorično, to je zahteva, to je aksijom. An axiom, or yeah, a demand yeah. is there. To je, kada bi rekel, kašen bomo imeli modul na mednarodni vesolski postaji za religijo. So it's, it's like, how will the module or part of the International Space Station uh, for religion look like in the International Space Station? That's similar to that question. Koga prime religiozni občutek, when anybody gets this religious feeling, mora tako iti v frižider. You have to, uh, that, that person has to immediately go to the, <laughs> to the uh, uh, fridge. In a great James Joyce, And read James Joyce and you're going to be fine. Dragon has always been a false prophet, so... <laughs> uh, what I wanted to say... Uh, it's okay, it's okay. I'm, I'm also an idiot. I'm, I'm also an idiot. Yes. <laughs> we are both idiots. <laughs> You, you have so, listened to two idiots. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> three, <I> three. <laughs> but, but film industry has always been involved in space because films are TV uh, are distributed through the channel, uh, like to the network of TV channels, which are like, uh, they interfere throughout the um, sat satellites, which are already there. So I don't see any novelty in tech, like any crucial novelty in technical sense here either. Uh, yeah, it's true, and I, I agree. It's uh, it's a waste of money of sorts. I was just, uh, I'm still uh, baffled uh, about how important this project suddenly became for the Russian Space Agency, and it was actually the reason that Sergei Krikalov, the cosmonaut, the last Soviet cosmonaut who actually spent his days orbiting Earth um, when the Soviet Union fell apart, he now works for the Russian uh, Space Agency and he was against this project and he almost lost his job because he expressed opposition to this kind of financial management. So this is why I basically wanted to get your, uh, your opinion on the matter. But we've been conversing for like, uh, for over an hour. So at this point, um, if you to agree, perhaps it makes sense to ask the audience uh, to maybe post some questions uh, or express any kinds of comments if anyone has any because I'm not sure if we've clarified matters or have complicated them uh, more than <laughs> they were before. So yeah, if you want to intervene, um, go ahead. If you need the mic, it's here with me. Anybody? For any questions? Or I'll just stand here like a statue. It's fine. I won't cover the view though. <laughs> um, we can also finish with just some um, free skating remarks from the two discussants and perhaps also from Blaj, uh, the interpreter. So um, any final thoughts, maybe um, any new matters to bring up? Free. Let's stay idiots. Ja, tako ki bi rekel moj prijatelj iz Zagreba, berte Dostojevskega. Read Dostojevski, as my friend from Zagreb would say. That, that was what, what I had in mind. Yeah. There's a nice movie though, from an Estonian director, The Idiot, 2011. We can mention it later on. A very unknown movie, The Idiot, in a very modern perspective. But outside of modernist, modern or postmodernist, great movie. But that's for later. Meta modernist. <laughs> Maybe that. I think we, we both share like kind of some of meta modernist ideas. This is the field where we meet from time to time. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you.
to our uh, participants, to the organizers, and to everybody in, uh, in the audience. Ah, there is one question. There's always one question after the applause. I apologize for not noticing. But for the end, I wish uh, some positive sentence, please. Not, we are idiots. That's a nice sentence, actually. It was a very positive <laughs> sentence. No, no. Sorry. So, some positive sentence. Gleite Brian of Look, uh, watch the life of Brian. It's an old classic. <laughs>